Now let's say you have two variables, say A and B, and they both have uncertainties in them. What will the uncertainty be in the sum of these two, if you add them together, or the difference if you subtract them? Now you might think if you add two things together, the uncertainty in the sum is just the sum of the uncertainties. And you'd be right if the two are correlated. But if they're not correlated, then it's a bit more complicated. And imagine, for example, you have a pile of bricks. And each of them has a certain height with a certain uncertainty. If you put two of them on top, what's the uncertainty in the combined height? Well, it could be that both bricks are bigger than expected, in which case you have a much higher overall pile. Or it could be that both bricks are smaller than expected, in which case it will be very small. But there's a decent chance that if the bottom one is big, the top one is small, or vice versa. So often, the uncertainties in the two sizes of the bricks will cancel out. And that's generally the case whenever you add or subtract uncertainties. Sometimes uncertainties go in the same way and make the final uncertainty bigger, but sometimes they cancel out. So you can't just add up the uncertainties. Now, you, you could, if you assume that the two th variables are statistically uncorrelated, so-called independent, then you can mathematically work out what the equation should be. Now, this is quite a complicated derivation. You can look at the stats textbooks to find it. I'm not going to show it here. But basically, it is that if your final resultant variable, a r, equals either a plus b or a minus b, turns out the equation is the same, then the uncertainty in r squared equals the uncertainty in a squared plus the uncertainty in b squared. Notice it's a plus here regardless of whether you're adding or subtracting. It's always a plus there. So basically you are kind of adding up the uncertainties. The final uncertainty is the sum of the other two, but the, the quirk is you have to square them both first, add them together, and then take the square root. So if you want to find what sigma r is, that'll be, of course, the square root of sigma a squared plus sigma b squared. Now this kind of adding up the squares has a particular name. It's called adding in a quadrature. Just so you know if someone mentions it. Let's do an example. Let's imagine you've got a very big laser, which has got a height L equals 2.32 plus or minus 0.02 meters. And you've just bought it, but you're trying to slide it into your lab. Unfortunately, the door of your lab isn't that big. It has a height d equals 2.40 plus or minus 0.03 meters. Now, will you be able to get the laser into the room? And that's going to happen if L is less than d. So we can define uh, the gap, which will be d minus L. And we want this gap to be positive. If it's negative, it's not going to fit. So the expectation value of this is 2.40 minus 2.32 equals 0 0.08, 8 centimeters. So if everything was exactly in the middle of its uncertainty range, you'd have an 8 centimeter gap and it'll get in with no trouble. But what's the uncertainty in this gap? So we can use the quadrature equation. So the standard deviation of the gap squared equals the standard deviation in d squared. So the uncertainty is d is 0 0.03. Plus, remember it's plus even though there's a minus sign here. It's always a plus whether you add or subtract 0 0.02 squared. So we can take the square root of both sides. And it turns out it comes in as 0.036, so roughly 0.04, as usual with uncertainties rounding to one significant figure. So the gap will be 8 centimeters 
plus or minus 4 centimeters. So from that, we could use our uncertainty of probability distribution functions to work out what the probability is of making it through. <laughs>